Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers, sisters, friends, enemies, frenemies. Uh, this is Brother Ralph Wills. We're going to be taking a look at Troy Black today and trying to stick two random, unconnected prophecies together to prove his prophecies actually are coming from God and coming to pass. But before we jump into Troy Black, let's take a reminder of Troy Black's disclaimers about his alleged prophecies, shall we? Before I jump into this, I want to say a quick disclaimer. I am not jumping on here claiming to get everything right every single time. And the reason is because I'm still human and I am not perfect at hearing from God. And also, even when I hear very clearly and accurately, I'm not perfect at sharing it and interpreting what I've heard. And that's just the nature of prof prophecy. The New Testament talks about how we see in part and we prophesy in part. I do want to say this. I know anytime someone starts talking about prophetic messages and things like that, it can raise some red flags. So I want to say this up front. I don't consider myself perfect at hearing from the Lord. Anything I share or any other prophetic person shares, take it to the Holy Spirit and pray about it, you know, because people with a prophetic gift are not perfect. I'm not perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. So if here, yeah, if you ever have questions, you can confirm that something is either from God or the Holy Spirit can say, hey, they missed God on this one, you know, if they did, or they've got this right, but this detail here I want you to ignore. Um, and I encourage you, you know, everything, anything I post prophetically or anyone else online, especially, you know, um, just to pray about it, uh, take it to the Lord and uh, let the Holy Spirit either confirm or deny it, you know, because as someone who shares prophetic words, I don't claim to get everything right every single time. And sometimes I have a lot more confirmation about specific words than other times. So sometimes I'm super, super pumped about sharing it, you know, and other times I'm just listening to the Lord as best I can and relying on his grace uh, to fill in the gaps. And here's the other thing. I really encourage you um, not to just take my word for it uh, when, when I'm saying this. I encourage you personally to go to the Holy Spirit, to go to God's word and to say, God, what are you saying to me about this? Because here's the thing. If the Holy Spirit comes to you and says, no, he's wrong, don't listen to him, then don't listen to me, you know? But, but if the Holy Spirit says, yes, there's some truth in this, let him show you what that truth is. So, so I have this word the Lord shared with me, y'all, um, very specific things, uh, specifically for and about the country of Russia. And I do want to say this ahead of time. I, I try to always say this. I don't claim to get everything right. I don't claim to be the mouthpiece of God or something like that. But what I'm about to share is what I hear from the Lord oftentimes in my spirit while I am praying, waiting upon the Lord and worshiping Jesus. The truth. You can't handle the truth. Okay, so those are Troy Black's former disclaimers. Um, now he's coming out. Let's see, what's the title of this video? Uh, what God told me about Trump conviction. Shocking. Now he's going to try to put a random prophecy that has nothing to do with Trump's conviction and make the two stick together as if he prophesied it. That's how this guy does his dirty deeds. Let's listen to this uh, about Trump's conviction. Hey, y'all, this is Troy Black. So Donald Trump has just been convicted. Oh, Troy Black enjoys uh, trying to take my videos down. He's done it twice now. So and he hasn't been successful yet, but we're looking at this to discern and critique and find out if this is actually a confirmed prophecy according to biblical definition so let's go on it is guilty on all of the charges that were brought against him in this hush money trial and i'm here to tell you today that god knew that this was going to happen ahead of time that god is real first off that he loves you but i'm also going to show you i'm not just going to tell you that i'm going to give you evidence that god not only knew this ahead of time but that he spoke it through me a couple days ago and exactly three weeks ago and then also evidence that god knew exactly when the verdict was going to come out and that he actually prophesied that ahead of time. And you can go watch the videos. You can see exactly where this was shared, we exactly will. where this was said. I'm going to give you links to that in this video as well. So this is a, what was shared, a video that was shared three weeks ago, uh, or sorry, two weeks ago. But it, in the video, I said that this is a prophecy from God that he gave me on May 9th. So you can go watch the original video and see that I said this was shared on May 9th. At the end of the prophecy, the Lord said this. He said, this is three weeks from today. Exactly. He said, this is three weeks from today. I shared that in the original video. And he said, a three-week word. What happened three weeks later, 21 days later, after May 9th, is May 30th. And that's the day that the 
uh, uh, the verdict actually came out, came forth. And so God not only predicted this ahead of time, but he actually predicted the exact day that it was going to happen. Um, and this is something that they- So we just have to question, is that what the prophecy that he prophesied three weeks earlier was? Is that what the prophecy three weeks earlier was? Or does he give prophecies so vague and so ambiguous and so general that nine times out of 10, he can make anything stick somewhere? And I'm going to prove to you that's exactly what he did. They didn't know exactly when the verdict was going to come out. It could have been uh, any number of days uh, with with the, de the you know, the deliberation happening. So this is the original prophecy. And then I'm going to share a second prophecy with you that was shared only a couple days ago, where, again, I believe God, again, predicted exactly what was going to happen. And that's public as well. And then I'm going to give you a word that God gave me just yesterday uh, about what happens next and how we should respond to this this verdict. OK. So this is the this is the word I shared two weeks ago. The title of the video was this prophecy will be fulfilled in three weeks. Here's a picture of the thumbnail. Pause that. Yep. We're going to look at that video here in a minute. We're going to find out that this prophecy had nothing to do with what he claims it had something to do with. If you notice right here, I don't know. Where's my pointer at? I don't know if that's showing up on there. But let me put my pointer up here. If you notice right here, his claim is that something was going to take place on Capitol Hill, okay, had nothing to do that with the verdict that came out on Trump had nothing to do with Capitol Hill, but he's trying to connect the two failed prophecies. So let's get rid of that pointer. The This prophecy will be fulfilled in three weeks. Many won't see it coming. Okay. That's the title of the video from two weeks ago. This prophecy will be fulfilled in three weeks. Many won't see it coming. And I share in that video. There were a lot of people who did see it coming, Troy, a lot of people saw it coming a lot of people were pretty sure it was coming very optimistic that it was coming i wasn't either optim you know it didn't matter to me whatsoever right but he said a lot of people wouldn't see it coming and they actually did so that's false but that i heard this word on may 9th 21 days before the verdict came out here's what i shared i'm just going to read this to you i don't pretend to fully understand how all of this connects specifically it's going to take a little time to, to see but okay let me put it to you like this Turn my volume. It doesn't connect. They don't fit. It, they, they don't fit, Troy. This is a call to repentance. Stop doing this. That what you said on May 9th had nothing to do with Donald Trump. And you know it. You know it. As I read it, you're going to see that this is what God was talking about. Okay. This is the, these it. are the phrases that he spoke to me. Hey, drop a comment. Make sure you tell me if you see what he's seeing. He's seeing it because he's trying to make his prophecy work. A situational drama enacted, quote unquote, on the steps of Capitol Hill that will, quote, unquote, okay, bingo, right there, right there. Where, where's my, it wasn't enacted on Capitol Hill. The verdict came out of New York. I, I don't even know what county for sure. He was tried in New York City, not Capitol Hill. He was trying to present this as some type of a, a rule, congressional ruling on something unquote, bring down a ruling party. Then the Lord said, both of these phrases are metaphorical of what's going to occur. And then he, and then I you see how he layers in it's metaphorical. He'll may, maybe layer in it's allegorical. This may be symbolic. So then he can take it and connect it to something else. I mean, this is already so vague and ambiguous and so far off. He put in his thumbnail, a picture of Capitol Hill. That you know that prophecy wasn't about what you're claiming it was about. It had nothing to do with the Trump verdict. I heard the phrase, I'm not just some dot. I have power. It's from the old Schoolhouse of Rock cartoon about uh, bills being being passed. And, you know, or, or they had one one show about bills being passed and about Capitol Hill. They also had another one about um, punctuation. So that, that was the punctuation one. But in the video, when I said, I'm not just some dot, I have power, then I said, uh, periods have the power to end a sentence. And then as soon as I said that, I said, God's saying this right now. God is saying the phrase ending a sentence. I, and okay. Well, what happened was, well, what happened was they ruled on something in New York City that didn't end the sentence. No sentencing is taking place. So what happened uh, on Trump's, the day Trump's verdict came out was it was more like a comma than a period. So, <laughs> I, we, we need to do some... Better laugh than that. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's not a period. It's a comma. 
because two things there's no no um no punishment no sentencing was issued so that's to come to pass but there's also a lot of people who believe this ruling will be overturned right so there was no period troy it wasn't a period and he's really was saying on that date it was something that had to do with bringing a party down trump may be a figurehead but he's not the party and you can go watch that it's in the original video and i made that point periods have the power to end a sentence okay come on <laughs> help me out here chat help me out here people did it end the sentence no there's no sentencing yet sentencing i think is due in july if it doesn't come on it's going to be appealed mm. then i shared this word from the lord the lord said someone is going to express and note their power with a display of vengeance attempted quote unquote bribery in the sense of using one's power and influence to enact a ruling they wouldn't normally otherwise be able to this was shared over two weeks ago and specifically the lord said three weeks so that would have been may 30 from may 9th would have been may 30th exactly okay then the only thing he happened to do uh was was he had he had the luck or the fortune of three weeks later the trump verdict came out and now he, he can of course he can try to put that that earlier vague and ambiguous statement together as they see god was it wasn't anything clear enough then the lord said it's going to cause a quote-unquote about face means like a turning around that forces a group of onlookers to start moving in the opposite direction from the way they were headed then the lord said this is three weeks from today like from may 9th when i heard it exactly and then he said a three-week word okay so there's a couple things here that i could try to guess at you know you you can go through it and sort through it and try to guess at what these are pray about it the lord does that does that sound like God? You know, do, do you really think? And this this guy has more prophecies. Maybe I don't know how many more than the Bible has. You know, I mean, he's got a, probably at least 10 times more prophet prophecy because he does this every day. It's how he makes a living. Uh, he may have at least 10 times more prophecies than the Bible itself. So if you make enough prophecies, something is eventually going to come close to looking like it sticks on the wall you just throw it up on the wall and see if it sticks or if it slides down that's what he does he does so many of these and so vague and we have a whole globe to see if they came to pass it hasn't given me uh, very clear distinctions on all of these so i'm not going to say okay this means this this means that i'm just sharing what i heard and i believe the timing on it was so specific that this is exactly what the lord was, was speaking about here's the second prophecy that i believe uh, applies <laughs> So I shared this on the 28th, this last Tuesday, about the Trump trial specifically. The Lord said this. He said, as a nation, you don't need to worry about this. He said, even if Trump gets convicted, you don't need to worry. I'm still in control. And then he said, I'm still orchestrating things for all of the actual Christians know, knew God's in control. God is sovereignly going to put in office the person of his choosing or take in, take out of office the person of his displeasure. This is a man who does not trust in the sovereignty of God. For good on behalf of those who love me and are called by my name. And they said, don't worry, don't fret, just rest, trust, and see all that I'm doing in this hour for this nation. And they said, in turmoil, I'm still working. And then uh, the Lord said, only good can come out of the plans I have right now for this nation. God spoke that through me on Tuesday of this week. Now, most people that would be pro-Trump, you know, or supporting Trump, what would they say? They would get on and, and try to say something like, don't worry, uh, everything's going to turn out fine, right? But that's not what God said through me. He said, don't worry. And then he said, even if Trump gets convicted, you don't need to worry. So it's obvious that God knew exactly what was going to happen um, ahead of time. So what do we do in response to this? So I got a word yesterday from the Lord. Okay, let's just go to the prophecy he's trying to connect to this. Okay, here it is. Are we going? I had to pause it for a minute. Uh, here's the May 9th prophecy. And it says, this prophecy will be fulfilled in three weeks. Many won't see it coming. Nothing about nothing about connecting it, connecting it to the Trump trial. This is a word God gave me about something happening around a three week timeline. This is a word God gave me about something happening around a three week timeline from when I heard it. I heard it last night and I believe that this applies to the United States, but I'm just going to read it as is and we're going to have to wait. OK, so you notice he didn't even believe he didn't even know for sure if it applied to the United States. That's how vague and ambiguous this nonsense was. 
and see what occurred. And I heard this quote from an old Schoolhouse Rock cartoon that I watched when I was a kid. They did a lot of things. There was a song that they did that was about Capitol Hill, and it was about some of the different branches of government. But they also had another song. Where so do you see how, how connected that was to passing some form of legislation or enacting some type of act, you know, some kind of congressional ruling? And yet he's trying to con connect it to the Trump verdict where they're just talking about like punctuation. And I heard this phrase, I'm not just some dot, I have power. And it was talking about the period, this tiny little dot that has a lot of power to end a sentence. Whoa, man. And I just, I sense that there's a prophetic parallel there. And that's the point God's trying to make. And I just got the verdict is in Troy. You are a false prophet. We, we, well, let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Yeah, we've done, we've done the spiritual DNA test. And God is not the author of this foolish nonsense. Like I said, I'm uh, not 100, I'm not 200, I'm 5,000. Andrew, you are not the father. <laughs> Yeah, we <laughs> we check the DNA of these claimed prophecies and they don't add up to the fact that they're coming from God because this is not what God does. Got that right now. Hey y'all, this is Troy. So I heard a word from the Lord. God spoke to me and gave me this message to share with you. This is something he shared with me last night, the night before I'm filming this. And now this is a three week word. And so from the time that I heard it, I believe that this is something that's going to be happening around that three week timeline. But there's a simple. Are you following that? He didn't give it a three week deadline. So if he says on May 9th, around that three week time frame, that could have been May 9th or it could have been two or three days before or two or three days after. And he has an entire eight billion people global picture to take and find somewhere where it connected to something. <laughs> Simple message God gave me to share with you today before I share this word. And this is for anyone who feels like you are either distant from God. Okay. So he's getting ready to give a message and he's actually going to give the gospel, which is commendable. However, I think that he believes that if he gives the gospel along with his false prophecies, that will exonerate him from lying in the name of God. But let me remind you, Troy, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, Matthew 7, 21 through 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So you can attempt to throw in some gospel along with your false prophecies. It's not going to exonerate you from what you're doing. It's not going to make you found innocent. So let me let's just see. Cool. Or that you've never had a real relationship with God. I'm going to say that again. If you feel like you're either distant so from God, you're... Let's, let's get past that and go back to where he talks about the prophecy again. Okay, here's the rest of it. Uh, and he's going to put some music in here, which I'm going to have to stop because he's probably got copyrighted music, which is going to make a strike on my video. But let's hear... We're, we're now at the end of the video where he actually comes back to this prophecy. And let's see what he has to say. And I'm going to share this simple word. This is all God asked me to do in this video. So after I share this, I'm going to be done. But this is a word God gave me about something happening around a three week timeline from when I heard it. I heard it last night and I'm filming this on May 10th. I heard this on May 9th. I'm probably getting it out in public a few days after that. And I believe that this applies to the United States. Now, it again, we're not where we we're, we're at. A, we're at a later part of the video. We're at the 12 minute mark. So, again, he has said. He does not even know if this applies to the United States. That, and I believe that this applies to the United States. Now, it may apply somewhere else, but this is my attempt at interpreting the word that I've heard. But I'm just going to read it as is, and we're going to have to wait and see what occurred. And for those that are wondering, okay, you're sharing all these public prophetic words online. Does any of this ever come to pass? The answer is yes. And I do follow up on these words as often as I can. But I also just released a prophetic archive. So I have a prophecy archive. I'm so we're going to be checking that out. And I mean, like I said, his prophecies are so vague and ambiguous that 
and he throws out so many of them, eventually something has to stick. Let me show you how, and because I don't have the imagination or the, um, the I don't know what you would call it, the lack of reverence for God to be able to do and say what Troy Black says. I couldn't come up with this much nonsense, foolishness, and um, deception. So I asked AI, <laughs> okay, this is coming from AI. This is just an example of the way Troy Black and others do prophecies. I asked AI, give me five prophetic words for July, so vague and ambiguous that they must take place somewhere globally. Be creative. All right. Now, this is AI's attempt, which you can, I, I think it's every bit as good as Troy Black's. Now, I could have gave it more information, but um, number one, prophetic word for July. In July, a moment of great transformation will sweep across the globe, bringing unexpected change and opportunities to nation nations far and wide. You could literally watch the news and you'll find that somewhere. Number two, prophetic word for July. Watch for signs of unity and collaboration of diverse voices from all corners of the world come together in July, sparking a wave of collective action. That'll be going on somewhere. During the month of July, a powerful stirring of hearts and minds will ignite a global movement towards compassion, inspiring people to extend kindness to one another. And there'll be stories of that somewhere in the midst of eight mil billion, not million, billion people. Number four, amidst the summer haze of July, a divine intervention will intervene, unveiling hidden truths and leading to a shift in the power dynamics within global nations. And, and th these sound every bit as good as NAR prophecies. Number five, look to the skies in July for celestial events, UFOs. We got UFOs. AI gave us UFO prophecies, y'all. Look to the skies in July for celestial prop. Uh, so celestial events will captivate the world, symbolizing a cosmic alignment that will have reverberating effects on societies worldwide. That's where celestials get her material. All right, y'all. Make sure you comment. Make sure you don't forget to like this video. Um, did you, were you convinced that Troy Black is an actual legitimate prophet or can you, do you see what I see? And that thing he said on May 9th had nothing to do with the Trump, uh, verdict that came down. It just happened to be three weeks apart, but it had nothing to do with a verdict. You have to do a lot of, um, what you call it? Uh, what's that word I'm looking for? I remember. You got to use a lot of conjecture to even try to make that fit together. All right. This is Brother Rob Wilson. Make sure you like, subscribe if you haven't, and share if you care. Troy Black is not a prophet. That is, This is not in any way, shape, or form how God operates. And just because the Word of God says that we prophecy in part doesn't mean that the part we prophecy is that vague and that ambiguous. No. All right. Grace, peace, and love in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.